Hello and welcome on 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adini Ajishafe. Well, time to look at some sporting stories again. Joining me to talk sport is Abdullah Kabiru. Good to have you, Kabiru. Good to be here anytime. Good one now. We'll be starting from the English Premier League match that will be coming up uh, just uh, between Arsenal and Wolverhampton Wanderer. This is a game that everyone wants to see what's going to happen at the Emirates Stadium. Can Arsenal actually win this game at Teta? And the lads will want to at least uh, see how they can build on, on their winning mentality against a Wolverhampton Wanderers that you can just have to be very careful playing against them because uh, <laughs> they can be very funny when they play football. Yeah, that's a tricky game actually. Wolves are in good form, Arsenal are in good form as well. Arsenal have to need to win obviously to keep up their momentum with the top four chase. Their rivals lost yesterday. Wolves, they're in good form as well. They're not far behind Arsenal actually on the in the league table. If you look at it, they've been on good form around that eighth to sixth position. I think it should be an interesting game. You can't guarantee that Arsenal will win that. It's not a straightforward game, I think. Yeah. Mm. Well, even though it's not a straightforward game, but you still want to raise Arsenal higher. Yeah, I think Arsenal is yeah, the, the form they've been on, I think they should win that game. But it will be a tight game, though, because... I, I'm looking at uh, this uh, player, Saka, uh, going to be... Uh, it, it could actually be the decider tonight. Yeah, he's been arguably their best player this season. Obviously, the young players, him, Smith Rowe, there's, what's his name, Martinelli, even though he doesn't always play, there's Odegaard, they sold Aubameyang, obviously, in January, so Lacazette, I think... Ketia. In Ketia, exactly, another one with Nigerian background. So they're relying on young players, but I think Saka is the standout player in that team yeah, this season. And since last season, he's been their best player. Now, English Premier Saka, League match yeah. that will be coming up between Arsenal and Wolverhampton Wanderers. We just, uh, it's going to be a tricky one. You just have to be very careful because that team can be very, very uh, shocking at times when they want to play football. If they come out at you, you will be shocked. Now, we look, just looked at that game between uh, Arsenal versus Wolverhampton. Let's look at some fixtures coming up in the Europa League. Europa League will be coming up round of 32. Uh, Dinamo Zagreb, that will be second leg anyway against Sevilla. Uh, you have uh, Lazio versus FC Porto. Olympia, course, will be at home against Atalanta after playing away to Atalanta. RB Leipzig uh, against uh, Real Sociedad. You have Napoli, Barcelona. That will be the star match. Rangers against uh, Borussia Dortmund. Uh, you have at the Ebros, uh, Ebros Park there. You also have uh, Real Betis against Zenit St. Petersburg in Spain. Sporting Braga versus Sherit Raspol of Moldova. Those are the teams that will be playing today. Now let's take them, maybe 2-2. Two, two, two. Dinamo Zagreb from Croatia. They will be at home against Sevilla, second leg. I just have to look at what happened in the first leg between Sevilla, Zagreb, Lazio versus FC Porto. If you look at FC Porto, uh, Champions League, they are always there. But this time around, they dropped, so they just have to play in the Europa League. Uh, so the mentality could be different slightly compared to any team, other teams there. There are some teams here who are actually Champions League teams, yeah. like Barcelona, like FC Porto, Zenit St. Petersburg, Borussia Dortmund, yeah. like that. Uh, not even forgetting Olympiacos. Yeah. Olympiacos. Yeah. They are always uh, there. Sevilla, well, we know they are the king of Europa League, so yeah, <laughs> they, they, are, they are always winning Europa League. That's but true. for this game today, let's look at Dinamo Zagreb, Sevilla, Lazio, FC Porto. Who are you standing with? Um, I think Sevilla should have too much for Dinamo Zagreb. And Porto, Lazio, that's a bit of a 50-50 game. So I think that would be interesting. I will say that's 50-50. But Sevilla, definitely, they should have too much for Zagreb. You believe that Sevilla should carry yeah. it? Is it because they are perennial winners of this yeah, competition? Yeah, I don't know. It's in their DNA, you know, as they say, when you've <laughs> won a competition so many times and obviously they're chasing their second in La Liga, so they have too much quality to, to deal it's with. It's just like the way Real Madrid dominates UEFA Champions exactly, League. Exactly, exactly. Winning for good 13 times. So right now, they too, yeah. uh, they've become the, the, the king the of Europa League. Of, Exactly, like that heritage, like they've always won it, is in the club system. When you go to the trophy cabinet, Europa League, Europa League, so mm -hmm. that's their aim. They need to do well against Zagreb. I think they should have too much for Zagreb. Uh, okay, for Lazio, in the city of Rome, they, are, they will be hosting FC Porto, who we know their mentality belongs to Champions League. But right now, here they find themselves in Europa League. I yeah. think uh, they should be able to make uh, that necessary statement to win. Yeah, that's, they're not the only ones, unfortunately. Even the likes of Barcelona, Dortmund, like you said, they're Champions League teams historically. But that's what happens in football. If you don't maintain a certain level, you drop down to Europa League. 
So that's where they find themselves now, and that's what they have to. They can't guarantee that they, they're too good for Lazio. I think that's a tight, tricky game. I think Lazio are also a good team in Serie A. Yeah. Now, still looking at the Europa League, we've been looking at the games now. Let's uh, continue to look at the fixtures. Olympia calls Atalanta. Well, Atalanta, a team who actually came out uh, in Champions League, shocked everyone like two seasons, and now they are uh, now playing in Europa League. They'll be playing against Olympia calls, who also we can call them a Champions League mental mentality team. Uh, well, from Greece, they are always there. Olympia calls seems to be the biggest uh, team from Greece. Uh, when you, before you remember the lack of. Uh, 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 Athens and all that, you think of Olympiacos first. Yeah. Now, they will be playing against Atalanta uh, at home. Real Sociedad uh, over there in uh, La Liga will be hosting German team RB Leipzig also in their own match. So let's look at the two, Olympiacos, Atalanta, so Real Sociedad, RB Leipzig. Well, at, well, Atalanta obviously a good side in Serie A. Um, they're chasing the top four at the moment along with the likes of AC Milan, Inter Milan. So I think they should have too much for the Greek side, Olympiacos. Like you said, they're a Champions League team historically, but it's not like they go far in the competition. Usually they yeah, leave yeah, they usually there. Uh, group stages. Mm. So, I can mention, so, like, let, let's say, uh, you always see Shakhtar Donetsk, yeah, always there. Yeah, yeah, Zenit St. Petersburg, the Olympia yeah, course, yeah, they are yeah. always among always the teams. There. FC Porto. Yeah, <laughs> FC Porto as well, Benfica, the likes of, even though they're here. This, yeah, but I think they should, Atalanta should have too much for them. Right? Difference in quality, like the Italian league and the Greek league is not really the same standard. So, But you never know, there could be an upset, but... I think Atlanta are favourites. Yeah, they should be favourites. Uh, what about the second man? We're talking about uh, Sociedad. Uh, a real Sociedad against, um, RB, against Leipzig. RB Leipzig. That's another interesting match. Interesting match. RB Leipzig, obviously, good side in Bundesliga. They're top three, top four, chasing Champions League. And Real Sociedad in La Liga. I don't think they're doing too well this season. So I think Leipzig will be slight favourites. Nkunku, we talked about him yesterday. Mm. He's their star player. Expecting so. to at least perform. Let's see, maybe yeah. perform magic tonight uh, for RB Leipzig against yeah. uh, Real Sociedad. That team, uh, Sociedad and Real Betis are not teams you underrate because of the way they play football. Uh, they are always there to let you know that you, you, you may not want to see them as, oh, these are very big or these are, they, they are not small, they are not big. They're just in between, yeah. just like Everton, Tottenham. You, you can't just place them. Yeah. They, yeah. they, they, can, they can be so inconsistent and they can be so consistent. That's so true. unpredictable. That's true. Those, those type of clubs are always just in and around it. Like you never know. This season they could challenge for champions. The next season they could be mid table. But yeah, they're a good side in La Liga. Historically, they've produced some good players. I think Griezmann was signed from there when he moved to Barcelona. So they're a good team as well. Okay, well, we've been looking at the uh, Europa Cup. Now, let's quickly uh, look at another one that will be coming up. The big one, yes, it's going to be the star match. Everybody wants to watch it. Napoli versus Barcelona. Napoli Barcelona will be the game to see. What's going to happen over there in the city of Naples where uh, they'll be hosting FC Barcelona at night? Uh, can Barcelona dislodge Victor Simmons' team? Do you think, do you see them winning this game? Um... It's actually going to be an interesting match. Barcelona are in good form recently. Obviously, Obama Young has started scoring. He's got a hat-trick in his last game. But Napoli are also a top team. Title chasing in Serie A. Like you said, Victor Simeon. it will be against two top strikers, Obama Young, Victor Simeon. You can even argue that that could be the final because those two teams, they're like the, probably the best two teams in the competition in terms of like the pedigree. The standard. There. Yeah, the standard there. So... I think that would be a very interesting match. But I think Barcelona might have the recent form they're in. I think they might have too much for Napoli, even though it's 1 1. I don't know. Is the away goal rule, has it been scraped from Europa or does it still. Well, it, as it is right now, well, let's just say Napoli, Barcelona tonight will be a yeah. cracker. Yeah, that would be the cracking game. Yeah. Now, Rangers versus Borussia Dortmund will also be coming up. We have Nigerians that are playing there. We have Aribo, Joe for Rangers. Will he be able to do well for Rangers? Not forgetting also Balogun there. Well, those are Nigerians. Uh, they'll be playing uh, those games today. Rangers versus Borussia Dortmund. Borussia Dortmund, we know German team who always, uh, they know they are onions when it comes to playing football. But 
can they do it against Rangers in Scotland over there? Well, Real Betis, another team from Spanish La Liga hosting Zenit St. Petersburg of Russia. Uh, well, Zenit, with the mentality of champions, as I always call them, against Real Betis. Uh, you look at this uh, Europa League, you have about uh, Real, Real Betis, Real Sociedad, Sevilla, three Spanish, uh, Barcelona, four Spanish teams who are really, that shows that uh, in the Europa League, we have so many uh, La Liga teams that are doing well. Four of them here. And if you go straight down, Sporting Braga will be playing against uh, from Portugal. They'll be hosting Sheriff Tiraspol. Uh, the team from Moldova is a, uh, a small team, but where well, they can make statement uh, against uh, Sporting Braga. Yeah, like you said, going back to the Dortmund Rangers game, so in Nigeria and Aribo, we did well in the first leg. They beat them 4 to a Dortmund stadium. Can you believe it? So... I think Rangers have probably qualified already because Dortmund have to chase them down more than they have to win by more than two goals to qualify. So like you said, and La Liga teams doing well in Europa League. Barcelona, maybe they don't feel like they belong there. Obviously, they went out of the Champions League to qualify. Um, and Sporting Braga, Portuguese team, they should, they should have enough for the Moldovian team, I think. Yeah. Sheriff Teraspol. Sheriff Teraspol, yeah. Well, matches are be coming up tonight in the uh, Europa League, UEFA Europa League. Matches will be coming up. Barcelona, Napoli, City of Naples. Who will carry the day there between the two teams? We'll be looking at those fixtures quickly with uh, Kabiru Abdullahi, who has been talking concerning those games in the studio. Now, uh, let's, uh, let's leave uh, Europa League. Let's talk about uh, a particular scenario where you have, uh, uh, when, you come, when it comes to women football, and men football. There have always been arguments concerning, oh, should they pay them equal? Do you agree? Which one do you stand with? You should pay them equally or you should stand with, okay, they pay le them less? Um, well, I think it depends on the market, maybe, because, you know, men's football has existed for longer. It, it gathers more media attention, like the more people watch it. Like women's football is only gradually, like, trying to catch up with the men's game. So the fact that they demand more everything, like TV deals, market, like sponsorships, men footballers are born on, like Cristiano Ronaldo, for example, is the most followed person, individual, on the whole Instagram, 400 million followers for a footballer. So they still have a bit of catching up to do. So I don't think they should be paid equally just yet. Even though I don't want to sound yet. like discriminating mm. against them, but I'm not discriminating. I just feel like they have to catch up first. Maybe when they have more fans watching them, like they can demand the audience that the men football demands, then they can start asking for the same equal. Oh, but, but we have, uh, like in the US now, they've yeah. agreed, okay, they pay, pay their women equally with their men. And also in a do state, a do state here in Nigeria, they agreed, okay, whatever we are going to be play, paying, paying their insurance, we're going to be play, paying a do queen. So it's not as if it's far away. It's here okay. in Nigeria. Okay, that's fair. I, in the U.S., maybe you should, if you put it into context, maybe it's a bit different because the women's team are actually far more successful than the men. The, the, the women, won, you know, what the world, world, the world Olympics, Cup, Olympics, Olympics, Olympics like so. So they the have women, the, bra the bragging exactly, rights. They have the so bragging far. rights. So it's a bit different there. I don't know. At those states, maybe it might be a political issue. So I don't want to get too much into that. But mm. I've not really paid much attention to the Edo State one, but. I think it's interesting. Maybe he wants to be, not to discriminate. You know, these days, maybe any small issue can be seen as discrimination. So I think it's, I'll encourage that. But I think for other aspects, I think they need to catch up first. Like, if we're going to be fair, they need to catch up. Like, in terms of economically, the demand for the men's game, they have to catch up before that, yeah. Good one there, just to digress a bit, asking about the equal pay that people have been advocating for men and women. A lot of people support, okay, pay them equally. Some are saying no. Well, another topic for another day, just to digress a bit. Now we're going back to talk football as we look at stories trending. Let's talk about some, uh, despite the fact that windows have closed concerning transfers, still news are going around for some players. A particular player called Cesar Aspicreta of Chelsea will be ending his, uh, the contract will be ending at the end of the season and he could be on a transfer, on free transfer to Barcelona as Barcelona has offered him two-year contract. Yes, they've offered him two-year contract for Aspicreta to come back to uh, play in, uh, in Barcelona as uh, a player from Spain. They want him back home to play for Barcelona. Yeah, Aspicreta, I think, for Chelsea has really done well over the years that he has been there. 
has been very professional. They their captain at one point. I think they've won so many trophies with him. Uh, anytime you see him playing, very professional player. He doesn't give away silly fouls, doesn't do much. So I think it was a good move for Barcelona. Very experienced player coming back there. Can play as a centre back, can play as a right back. Obviously, they've really struggled in defence recently, Barcelona. So I think I support that move. Even him, obviously, going back to Spain, being a Spanish international, that would be a good move for him. Yeah, I think I'll back And, and uh, for, from the way he has been playing, uh, he has been so outstanding for Chelsea. He has. Then well, going to Barcelona because of Silver Savi is really the one really knocking at the door to get this player. Now, the two years offer has been on, on ground. They just, all they want is for him to agree and everything will be in place. Yeah. After all, he will be going on a, uh, on a free transfer. Exactly. Like looking at his position at Chelsea, I think Rhys James has kind of replaced him. The young guy, for, he has a Nigerian dad. Rhys James has been really outstanding this season, even though he's injured at the moment. So, and Barcelona, obviously, they signed Dani Alves, which is temporary. He's like almost retirement age, like 38. So bring him back as Peliqueta to help them with that experience. Everything. I think that would be a good move for them. Yeah. That would be a good move for Cesar Spilicueta if he joins Barcelona. Coming from Cabiru, they will be looking at his contract. Where will be ending with uh, Chelsea and uh, uh, Barcelona right now. They've offered him a two-year contract. They want the player to join them over there at the new camp. See, talking about some transfer stories now trending well. A particular player, very prone to injury, but is a very tricky and talented young man. His name is Usman Dembele. Well, right now, as we speak, Chelsea and PSG are leading the pack to sign Usman Dembele of Barcelona on a free transfer. Also, they want to get him. Although he was almost, he was almost leaving in January when that uh, transfer window opened. He was almost moving away, but he did not. At the deadline day, the thing collapsed. That contract collapsed. Uh, collapsed. Uh, he would have been able to move because uh, Barcelona seems not to be having it anymore. They wanted him out after getting Obama Young, getting uh, Adama Traore, and all that. But but as it is, Chelsea, PSG, are leading the park. Yeah, I think Usman Dembele, like you said, very talented young player. Like him and Mbappe, when they started together, they were thinking who was going to be the outstanding French player of the next generation. These days, it looks like Mbappe has gapped him a he bit. He has an edge now so he, because he's, yeah. I think he's more fit. Yeah, he's fitter. He's, he's, maybe he's, he's more professional. He, yeah, he's very injury prone, like you said, and maybe he has other issues. Maybe professional contract issues. Uh, attitude the too. Attitude exactly. So that has held him back a bit. But if he moves to Chelsea, like you can see, he's worked with Thomas Tuchel in the past. So maybe he can re re bring him back to that form he used to be at at Dortmund and PSG. Maybe looking when Mbappe leaves to possibly Real Madrid to bring somebody like Dembele, another very talented young player. He's still only 24, so he can still recover his career. It's not like he's finished completely. Mm -hmm. But he hasn't really worked out since he joined Barcelona like a few years ago. The move, injuries, attitude, and all of that, he hasn't really worked out. So I think it's best for him to leave for both parties. Yeah. And if you want to at least uh, make it in football, in whatever you do, not only in football, whatever you do, you also have to keep your head low. Uh, mm. For Dembele, uh, aside the fact that he's very injury prone, yeah. uh, he needs to watch his attitude because I saw a particular post uh, about his attitude in, in, in Barcelona, and even before he came to Barcelona. You know that there are some players that some coaches understand how to mold them. Why some coaches cannot just stand your being childish or your being a bit indisciplined? Uh, mm. So for in Barcelona, well, I'm sure Xavi knows what he's doing. Uh, but before he came, there have been a lot of uh, issues concerning Usman Dembele, uh, his attitude and all that. But really, he needs to get his act together. Well, PSG Chelsea will be a bad place if he wants to move. Yeah, definitely. Even previous managers before Xavi came, they've had similar issues with Dembele. He will say he doesn't come to training on time, he's not this, that, and he's not fit physically, always injured easily. They signed him for a lot of money, over 100 million or something. Mm -hmm. And when they sold Neymar to PSG, he was meant to step in to become that That's, Neymar. That shoe was too big for him. It's too big, way too big for him. But I think he still has time to recover his career, to become that outstanding player, maybe to Chelsea, you never know. I think Chelsea could do with someone like him. Even them to their... The attack is not really as... Oh, my my, my point is just that, um, okay, we know he's injury pro. Although at mm. times you see some player, they move mm. and they move and they pick. Yeah, that's true. You understand? But for him, injury has been the bane of his career, one way or the other. He has, he's a very talented player. Yeah. But that injury steps down, actually, uh, is, is, uh, 
the profile that could have been uh, at that level where you remember um, Kylian Mbappe, yeah, uh, yeah. remember the Dortmund player, oh, yeah, Haaland, yeah, yeah. and now the Billy ought to be at least supposed to be among those players yeah, to be rated yeah. that, in that position. Yeah, definitely. You never know, maybe if he goes to Chelsea, maybe they have better fitness people that can, that can help him sort out his injury issues. He will become fit. Maybe the change of environment. Maybe he will have a better diet or something like that. So he will be fit and ready to go. It might be a good move for him because I don't think he really fits up. So even the fans were booing him the other day. Mm. So it's not really a nice environment when you're a player. So the fans so are between Chelsea him. and PSG, which one do you think, for, 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 from your own side of view, uh, which one do you think will suit him most? Um, I think Chelsea. Probably Seriously? with the manager, yeah, having worked okay, on having him in worked the past, in at, uh, yeah, he can bring out the best in him. Because PSG, like the French league. Maybe because uh, he's from France. Yeah, uh, he's that from could France. Be home uh, for you. Yeah, it could be, but I don't know. I feel like going to the French league, you're, the, you're now, in Now, if he goes to PSG, we'll yeah. have some big guys. So, Neymar, Messi, Messi yeah. Maria, all these guys are still there. Yeah, even though I suspect when he goes, he will be a replacement for Mbappe. Maybe that's what they're looking at. Uh, like. If Mbappe moves to, that is, if Real Mbappe Madrid. moves to Real Madrid, yeah. the, the trajectory now, yeah. if Mbappe moves, it moves out, then they can bring him in. Bring him to, to replace So him. after all, he has played with uh, Messi before, so he'll yeah, be an automatic he Messi picking up. Yeah, but well, I think he should probably, Chelsea will be a better fit, I suspect, mm. Chelsea, yeah. Think so? Yeah, that, Chelsea. That physical football they play in England, in yeah. this in, injury-prone Dembele, every yeah, second, every minute, <laughs> to get players get him out of the pitch. Yeah, I just don't know. The French League, I feel like when you're in your prime, in your That's career, you, should go there you shouldn't really go there. Maybe when you're about to retire or you're getting older, maybe mm. you go there like Messi did. When you're in your prime, I play in a difficult to, league. So, exactly. Okay, but uh, f the fact that he's, he's injury prone mm, and you okay, know how issue. physical English Premier League is. That's true. That's so true. Uh, those pl uh, the players in English they don't want to know if you are a star. Yeah. All they want is let's play football. <laughs> That's true, that's true. But you never know. Maybe Chelsea have the, the backroom staff to sort his injury crisis out. So mm. we'll, we'll, uh, that should be an interesting this thing. Well, we've been looking at uh, Ousmane Dembele. If uh, Chelsea, PSG are really leading the park to get this uh, young man into their uh, into their fold. Now, let's look at another story, trending where Manchester United they really want to sign Harry Kane and Declan Rice of West Ham United, and now they are confident of signing the two, even if they don't qualify for UEFA Champions League. News came out that they don't mind uh, going for the two players. Even if they don't qualify Champions League, they really want Harry Kane and they want uh, uh, Declan Wright. Although both of them play for England, and now uh, if they are able to get them, it will be a clause for Manchester United at Old Trafford. Yeah, I think those two positions, like United, they've really, they've really, if they can manage to get those two players, I think they will be back competing for a title. Because Ronaldo, like even though he's done well this season, I think he's starting to look his age, like. He's not on guys with Ronaldo. Even last night against Atletico Madrid, you could see it. He, he's not able to run and do the other things. And Harry Kane is at the peak of his career. He wants to leave Tottenham like you can see. They're struggling. He nearly moved. He well, nearly moved know, to They kept him against... I, I still stand on the fact that he kept that player against his wish because yeah, staying they, back... If you had moved to Manchester City when that deal was almost materializing that time, if you had moved, maybe by now... Uh, the, the level is now will have, will have been higher. No, oh, definitely, definitely. I think if you had moved to Man City, we'll not be talking about a title race. I think it will be over already. And like you'll score so many goals. So many goals, Champions League, you'll be competing because I don't know. It's hard to see world class player not winning trophies. Like being at Tottenham for how many years? He has scored so many goals. He's one he of the best English strikers. He needs to move. And Declan Rice as well. He's having a very good season. A top player. I think he should, if he, he moves... He has been very nice, uh, doing well for, for West, West Ham United. Exactly. And now if he moves to Manchester United. So having the two of them to move into Manchester United could actually be the key. Maybe they will change the mentality of the players there because from the way I see it, I see if, uh, the winning mentality is not there. No, nah, it's not there anymore. Obviously, would they bring in a new manager as well? So having those two players, Declan Rice is still very young. He's an upgrade on what they have now. Is it Fred and McTominay? Pogba might be leaving as well in the summer, so maybe replacement for Pogba. 
But yeah, Harry Kane, if they can manage to get Harry Kane, whoever gets Harry Kane, I think the summer, they're really getting a world-class, one of the best strikers in the world at the moment, yeah. Hmm. If Manchester United are able to actually scoop this, that would be nice, but I don't wish it would turn out to be another Maguire. <laughs> <Just say. laughs> well, um, let's quickly move to this particular uh, last story on the uh, last story that we'll be looking at now. Well, when Tottenham Hotspur played against Burnley, they lost that game by a long goal. It was a shocking defeat, although not that uh, they cannot be defeated, but not after beating Manchester City, and then you go against Burnley and you lost. A lot of uh, fans were not happy uh, that the fact that they have been so inconsistent talking about Tottenham or sport. Now the coach or the manager is saying, well, I'm ready to quit Tottenham. If, if that's it, if he is the problem, he doesn't mind quitting Tottenham or sport. If uh, fans are already seeing what's happening, when Mourinho came, we were like, oh, it's Mourinho now. Yeah. <laughs> he left. When this person was there, this and that. Even since Pochettino left, nobody has been able to turn the fortune of Tottenham, Tottenham around. That's true, that's true. All the coaches have been coming. That's true. They've had like how many managers now? Is it three? This guy is the fourth manager in how many years? Just a short period of time. They brought in Experto. Exactly. He couldn't do anything. They brought Rona and Mourinho and all that. couldn't do it. Now this is the third manager since Pochettino left just a few years ago. So I don't know. He has been there for months and he's complaining already. He said they don't sign players. But you can't blame him. Like Given what he has won in the past, this is a guy who has coached Juventus. He won stuff there. Chelsea. Chelsea. He won stuff there. Inter Milan. He won stuff there. So he's used to working with world-class players, getting players that he wants. And Tottenham, you know how they are in transfer market. They really buy top players. They rather sign young players. And maybe he doesn't have the patience for that. And maybe he thinks... He's a top class coach. Top class top coach. Class managers. Have you know, exactly. this, this man, uh, Conte is like Mourinho. Yeah, they're they don't, similar. They don't have that patience for uh, maybe let's let's be hopeful. Maybe we can still. They want success. Yeah. They want instant success. Exactly, exactly. So maybe he thinks he can get a better job soon. Maybe Real Madrid job might be open soon. Given that Ancelotti might leave, maybe they will go out of Champions League. Who knows? But top other top teams might be looking for a top man. Even United, you never know. When Maybe they will still go, they will still they will go still for this, for this guy. If he, if, because right now he's saying uh, no one deserves this. He doesn't understand what is happening to yeah, that team. Yeah. And you know he's a very factual person. If he, he will is. come out and say, okay, I don't even know what yeah. is happening to this team. Yeah. Yes, we won against Man City. We lost against Burnley. Yeah. Uh, it's so inconsistent. The graph is not going smooth. It's not at all. Like They don't have the And players, it's not everyone yeah. that could actually do this by coming out and say, okay, I don't mind. I can drop it. I can resign. Yeah, it shows how confident he, he is in his own ability that he he knows that he can get any job like literally he has earned that by on merit so he can if he leaves Tottenham next Real Madrid might look for him so he know. knows his job we've been talking concerning Antonio Conte who says he can actually quit if he is a problem he doesn't mind since that team is so inconsistent it's been a wonderful time with Kabiru Abdullah thank you very much pleasure good to be here I am Adeni Ajishafe sport is business and fitness thanks for watching well if you want